whichever sword you happen to like, it's all good. We don't have to do tribal warfare, you know, my faction. It's silly. Swords work in skilled hands. That's just all it is. Like so many other skills, cutting with a sword looks deceptively easy from the outside. And a lot of people who have never done it, try it out for the first time and always afterwards say, wow, this was way harder than I thought. Even when it comes to just cutting water bottles. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> and somebody who is really skilled at it makes it look effortless. So just for comparison, Let's look at some where things don't go so well to put things into perspective. Now, I'm not trying to poke fun at anyone at all. I've poked plenty of fun at myself. I've uploaded one of my absolute worst cutting sessions ever just to show you how it can go. You know, even if you know how to cut, sometimes there's just a day where everything falls apart. Nothing works. You have an off day and it's just infuriating. <laughs> so uh, when you search to Tommy cutting fail. There isn't that much coming up, but here's one video. I'm just gonna play it and we'll take a look how it goes. The first cut was actually quite good on this. <laughs> his expression just, look at his expression. Oh, and I know that so well. I feel that expression. <laughs> And I've done it a number of times too, where I tried the double cut and it's just... If the edge alignment on the first one isn't just about perfect, it throws the top of the mat around too much that you don't have the time. The idea is if the first cut is really good, then it'll take a while for the top mat to fall. So and it, it's hard to catch up with it. If before you've completed the first cut, it already falls and it's really hard to catch up to it in time. <laughs> I totally empathize with that groan. <laughs> yeah, that one is hard. <laughs> you almost hit the other dude with it. So I think this is where people jump to the wrong conclusions whenever they look at videos where just the best cuts are presented by people who are very experienced and it just looks like the sword zips right through it and a lot of people jump to the conclusion that oh well that's the power of the katana. But as you can see if the edge alignment is off even by somebody who has been practicing it quite a bit the mat will still stop it. You know, because the blade, at some point, if it's a little bit off, as it encounters resistance, it'll be thrown off more and more to the point where it just twists inside the mat and stops right there. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. The, f the first one was really nice, actually. And that shows you how quick you have to be. You know, he got the first one actually pretty well. So you see the mat doesn't fall terribly quickly, but you still need to come around quickly enough in time. <laughs> that frustration cut at the end. Yeah, I feel it. I think that's the best part about it, their body language after a failed attempt. Mm. There's something about horizontal cuts that's surprisingly difficult. I still struggle with those myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the first one was really nice. I think there was just a bit of hesitation in between. And I, I got that pretty often too. Like sometimes I I do a cut and then I realize that, okay, the, the cut was clean enough that the mat is not gonna fall quickly immediately, 
but it takes me too long to process that oh that was clean enough for a follow-up cut and then by the time i realize that and attempt the second cut it's already too late <laughs> yeah the first one was really nice and then the edge line was off on the second cut so that's when i just pulled it away of course also once the mat is loose it also becomes more difficult because if the edge alignment isn't 100 percent perfect and you have a freestanding mat you'll just pull it away so the blade will just you know hook into it and just pull it off whereas normally if it's attached there's a bit more resistance so maybe it it might still be able to cut through <clears throat> Yeah, the old swing and miss, that happens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same thing. There's also a little, this little moment of hesitation in between because her, her first cut was quite good. But <laughs> then the follow-up, you have to be quick and decisive about it. Oh! Oh, that's a shame. The first one was so nice. Whoa. <laughs> and this is how a blade can be damaged sometimes. If you, you know, if the edge line is a little bit off, it gets stuck in the target and you put, especially if you put a lot of force into it, uh, which is what a lot of beginners try. They try to compensate with brute force for, you know, the lack of technique. And then that can easily go very wrong because it doesn't really... I mean, it can help to an extent. You know, if you if you have the same uh, poor edge alignment and you do a f light or medium cut, it, it'll get stopped. If you power through, you may still complete the cut. It'll throw the mat all over the place, but you can still force it through. But again, that puts a lot of stress on the blade. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I think she would have gotten it on the second one if she had hit it. Because by that, by that sound, you know, the way it whistles through the air, that tells you that the edge alignment is pretty good. That was so close. Oh, that was a nice one. So on the first one here, it almost doesn't move at all. Oh, again, first one was really nice. In fact, I think you would have gotten it. Uh, it was just that the the second cut went too high. He just <laughs> just cut off a tiny sliver of the top. Damn, he went for something extremely challenging there, because he was cutting one, then he cut the bottom half, and then he was trying to cut the falling piece on the third. That is extremely challenging. Ah. Oh. That was nice and fast, but sometimes you just you just miss. <laughs> the sound, <laughs> the sounds of frustration. They are quite universal. You can see you actually looked at the sword there to make sure it wasn't bent. Yeah, th the horizontals are harder than you may think. Oh, that was nice. That doesn't actually belong in a fail. Oh, there. Okay, never mind. <laughs> there it is. That's why they included it. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Here's another one. They're cutting multiple mats, which is something that I've never done simply because it gets kind of pricey. You know, each mat costs about $10. So just for something to cut up, you can imagine. So if I were to do this, there would be 50 bucks worth of mats stake there. And um, you just limit the number of cuts you can, you can get. You know, if you do one cut on five mats versus, you know, five cuts each per mat, it's just more economical to do just one. So I have no idea how well I would do with multiple mats. It's, it's definitely tricky because whenever the edge alignment is a little bit off, it'll be amplified with each new mat. You know, if the first mat, like if it's a little bit off the first time and then the first mat 
pulls it off even more as it goes through and then it hits the next one and you know so on and so forth it keeps amplifying any error so that's difficult whoa okay she only missed the last one nice mm. quite nice until then Yeah, it's it's hard. If it's not perfect like that, it gets stopped immediately. It doesn't really matter what oh that's nice. It doesn't really matter what blade it is. You know, if the edge alignment is off then it's just not gonna do it. So this is a case where you need both. That's what makes it difficult. You need both good edge alignment and force. If you don't if you don't cut hard enough in this case, it's just not going to go through that many mats. That was a very pronounced slice there. If you look at that again. Nice and clean up to the last one. <laughs> oh. That was very nice. That takes a lot of skill. As yep, same as this. Those are some great cuts. And you can see how much power he puts into it. So that's not easy to perform a cut with that much power and that much control at the same time. Also, look at the width of that blade. That is an extremely wide blade. So before I saw these videos, I, I wasn't really aware. Wow, that is nice. Look at how wide that is. That is a substantial blade. The vast majority of katana reproductions that you see on the, on the market are relatively narrow, but this one is that's a significant blade. Hmm. I think he just hit the peg there. Because that looked like quite good form. You can definitely tell that he has a lot of practice with the edge alignment. But uh, yeah, I think it was just so low that it hit the peg. Uh, that's another one of those really wide blades. <laughs> that's just a shame. Just the last one. Mm. Nice. Nice. Whoa. And again, also, I do wonder how common those wide blades actually are in Japan. It's like on the, the reproduction market, what you have available in the West, that's always the narrow ones. Like, look at this thing. I would definitely wouldn't mind trying out one of these, but I haven't found them. I've only seen them in these videos. Because they have to cut really freaking well. Because this is basically... This is starting to approach Kriegsmesser width, basically. Which also makes makes the handling impressive. You know, when I do those fast double cuts with a wide blade like that, I'm pretty sure that's going to be heavier because it looks like the spine is not significantly thinner than the narrower type, if at all. So that would add weight to it, which of course aids in the cut, but makes handling more difficult. So it slows it down for follow-up cuts. And you know, every time the the sword nerd debates get a little out of hand when people keep you know, arguing back and forth, which is the best sword, or this sword sucks, or whatever the hell, uh, then it's nice to just watch something like this for a change. You know, just these people just doing their thing. They don't care about all the, the angry debates that people have on the internet. Uh, they are clearly skilled. You know, they practice a lot. And yeah. It's the same thing as people with 
long swords or Chinese swords or Filipino swords or whatever, you know, wherever in the world you are, whichever martial art you practice, whichever sword you happen to like, it's all good. We don't have to do tribal warfare, you know, my faction in either direction, whether it's fanboys glorifying the katana or the exact opposite, people trying to talk trash about how the katana is a useless sword and only ever good for slaying unarmed peasants. It's just, it's silly. Either way, it's silly. <laughs> Swords work in skilled hands. That's just all it is. So it's nice that there are videos that show it all. They don't just cherry pick the most flawless cuts. They also show the less than optimal attempts and that puts it into perspective. And this is still people who practice on a regular basis. So you can imagine somebody who picks up a sword for the very first time is probably just going to knock the mat around. So yeah, it's definitely more difficult than you might think looking at it from the outside and it requires a lot of practice. So yeah, respect to anyone who does this, makes it look effortless because that takes a lot. Anyway, hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.